In this video, I'll talk about how to make freeform vocabulary puzzles. So this is a kind of puzzle which uses a specific, relatively small number of themed or vocabulary words. So this can be very useful, for example, for teachers if they want to make a puzzle about a particular set of words that they've just taught, or if you want to make a specific themed puzzle for someone's birthday or some other event using specific small number of words specifically relevant to that context. So to get started in the Create New Puzzle window, you can choose the freeform vocabulary option. There are some other options. You can make puzzles in various different shapes as well, or you could consider making a word search. But for the moment, let's make a freeform vocabulary, which is the simplest way to do it. Now, the new puzzle window basically guides you through the steps you need to make these kind of puzzles. So let's just click on that type of puzzle. We then have to choose which grid size. So 15 by 15 is a pretty standard kind of size, and that will fit moderate numbers of words. If you've only got a very small number of words, 5, 10 or something, you might want to start with something significantly smaller. If you're really keen on having a lot of words and using all of them, then you might want to make it bigger. But as we'll see, there's ways to adjust the size later, depending on how the fill goes. So let's just use a standard 15 by 15 size for the moment. We now see the Create Vocabulary Puzzle window. So there are some tabs along the top, depending on what you want to do. So you can either use words where you just type in the words you want to use directly. So if, I was, if we were making a puzzle perhaps relevant to crossword compiler, we might type in Anthony, that's my name, Lewis, my surname, WordWeb, the dictionary add-on, crossword compiler, some related words, dictionary, Puzzle, Sudoku, oops, word search, and you could keep going typing in whatever particular puzzle words you want to have. And if you click build puzzle, that will then fit those into a grid for you. And you can see what happens. So here we've got a grid that's really too large for the number of words that we've got. So if you want to make change the grid size, you can use the size button on the toolbar here. And here I could make it two squares smaller, say. I could probably go down another two squares than that. OK, so now it fits a bit more reasonably. On the bottom here, you can see a summary of what's been used. So here we've used seven of seven words. We've used all the words I put in, and it gives you some numbers about the number of letters and the number of intersections. So these fills are generated randomly and there are potentially lots of different fills from your given set of words. And if you want to just view a different fill, you can press the next button. And that will just show you another random fill. And then when you're happy with it, you can press accept. So here I started with words, so we haven't got any clues. So if you want to write the clues, you can go to the clue menu, cl review, edit clues, and you can type in your clues. Okay, so let's try another puzzle. Go to free phone vocabulary, 15 by 15. Instead of typing in words, I could select an existing theme word list or some other word list I've saved before. So there are lots of theme word lists provided. For example, if I select the astronomy list, I'll get a relatively long list of astronomy words. And here, typically, you won't expect all of the words to be used. You'll only use some of them. If I click Build Puzzle. Now that you can see the bottom here, it says it's used 22 of 97 words. You see it says fill five, because every time it finds a better fit, fill if fitting in more words, it will um, increase to use more of your words. But typically, you don't have to wait for very long. You just click accept whenever you're happy with it, or you press next to generate a random fill if you're not happy with it. If you want to view what words are used, you can use the words used button. So instead of looking at them in the grid, which can be harder to read, this will actually give you a list of the words that you used, and you can see whether that's happy or not. And the unused words gives you a list of the things that haven't been used. So here, because it was a long word list, we haven't managed to use them all, and this tells you which words are not used. And you can go back to previous fills if you prefer to actually 
one of these earlier ones and you can view them, navigate with these arrow buttons on the toolbar. Okay, when you're happy, you can just press accept and then go to review edit clues and write your clues. Now, if you're going to write another puzzle the next week on astronomy, I've got my same astronomy word list here, but I don't want to reuse the same words as I used last time. So what I could do is select the option on the action menu for remove words used in last fill. That will then delete the words that I've already used in the previous fill, and I'm just left with new words. And if I build this puzzle, this should produce a new vocabulary puzzle just using words that I didn't use last time. So now I've got two puzzles with two different sets of words in. I could use those if I was teaching on consecutive weeks or something without too much duplication. So here I've been just started typing in words. But if you know you've got a particular number of words and you prefer to write the words and the clues at the same time, you can do that. So for example, if I was making a chemistry puzzle, I might have copper and I might want to test uh, people's understanding of chemical symbols. So I'd have CU or something. Hydrogen, something a bit easier to get people started and so on. So you can just keep writing whatever clues you like and then click build puzzle. In this case, of course, the grid is far too large, but I started with something very big, so I could make it smaller if I want to. Okay, now if I go to review edit clues, you'll see that, of course, my clues are already in place because I put them in right at the beginning. So using use words with clues, you can make a complete puzzle and then you're just ready to go. It's all done immediately. So if I wanted to print this out for a worksheet or a PDF to send by email, I could go to print export worksheet on the file menu. And if I do a print preview, you'll see a preview of the grid and my across clues, and my down clues already for saving. Alternatively, I could export an interactive web puzzle. There's a separate video on that. So you can also create puzzles in shapes if you like. If you choose the shape, that gives you a list of different shaped grids that you can use and then fill your words into. So this can be nice for making a themed puzzle, for example. So if I do use shape on this dog picture, I go and gives me an option to create the vocabulary puzzle and I can go and use my words I had before. If I want to enter some new words, I use the action button clear list. I can delete all those. Or if I saved previously my words and clues, I can reopen them. So here I've got elements and I could reopen a previously saved list. Or clear it and enter. Or I can go directly from a word list. Another thing you can do, if there's a particular word you definitely want to have, and perhaps you want to make it the focus, if I wanted to put, say, Fido in the middle of this, I could type Fido to make sure it appears right in the center. It's a key word. And then I can go to words, create vocabulary puzzle. And this will give me the options about what I want to do. So I could delete everything and start again. But here, what I want to do is I want to create a puzzle in the remaining space. So that will fill around the word Fido with other words that I choose. And then I can choose some word list here, um, whatever I like. So maybe flowers, build puzzle. And now I've got a, a vocabulary puzzle constrained to have my keyword Fido in the middle. And you can put as many words as you like in the grid to start the thing off before you do a vocabulary fill if you do it this way. When you're making a standard vocabulary puzzle, there is an alternative style that you can use. So if I made this grid 
As before, you get black squares separating the words. If you prefer, you can go to the Options tab here and choose Voids as the being the surrounding squares. So Voids, if I go back to use words and build the puzzle, you can see now I've just got an outline of where the words are rather than lots of black squares. If I've built a puzzle and I then notice something wrong with it, I can just re-edit it and go to words, create vocabulary puzzle. And then it says this will delete the current grid, which is what I want to do if I want to rebuild it. Click yes, it takes me back to my word list. And say maybe I made a typo here and I didn't want Alpine. I could delete Alpine. The other thing you'll notice here is that this list has Alpine and Alpine flowers in. And it'd be a bit weird perhaps to have a puzzle with both of those in because you're repeating Alpine. So again, on the options tab, there's an option to avoid duplicates like that. So avoid word and subword by default will avoid things like we had over here with Alpine and Alpine flowers. It'll avoid repeating a word that's also a subword. The example given here is it won't have Britain and Great Britain. It'll only ever use one of those two words if you have this option selected. Likewise, you can avoid duplicate substrings if you want to, for example, to avoid the word board appearing both as surfboard and freeboarding. If you want to save the options you used here for use in future puzzles, you can click the Save Options button. Another thing you can do is build a puzzle from a word list. So we, here we were using words we typed in directly or we selected a theme word list. There are also very large word lists provided with WordWeb or optional add-on word lists. So here you can use, say, the default word list, which is 100,000 standard, all the words in English, basically, um, if you want to have a really large database of words available to make your um, freeform puzzle. If you're teaching English, there's also a much shorter word list here called TEFL, Teaching English as a Foreign Language, this just has very common English words if you want to teach things that's going to be familiar to um, relatively early language learners or young children. So you can see all the words that have been used here are pretty common and well known. So when you've got a large list of words, it usually makes sense to build the puzzle first using the words and then write the clues. That way, you only have to write clues for words you actually use. If you've only got a small number of words then it, and you're going to use all of them in the grid anyway, then it doesn't really matter whether you build the puzzle just using the words and then write the clues, or you start off with the words and clues and build the whole thing straight off in one go. If you want to review or edit the word list provided, you can go to the Words List Manager on the Words menu. So the main tab here shows the main large word lists. But you can also click on the theme list here, and this will give you all the theme list word lists that were listed in the Create Vocabulary Puzzle window. And you can edit or sort or remove duplicates as you wish here. And you can also convert lists to main word lists and vice versa using the Convert menu. Finally, let's just say that you can do a vocabulary puzzle in the form of a word search if you don't want to write clues, just to emphasize vocabulary. I use word search, choose a size. I get the same window effectively where I can choose either uh, a theme word list I've entered myself, one of the existing theme word lists like we used before for astronomy, say, or I could use one of the large word lists to have lots of words. So here, if I build the puzzle, I will end up with a word search puzzle where people have to instead circle the words in the grid. So this is a bit quicker because, of course, you don't have to write clues, but likewise, it may be less testing. You can, if you want to, uh, edit the keywords. So if you go to the words menu and look at keywords, here we've got the list of words that were actually used. And normally when you do a word search, you just list the words and then people find them. But if you want to make it a bit more difficult, you could of course actually turn these into clues. So if you, instead of AGN, you might change this to where you might 
find a black hole. AGN stands for Arctic Galactic Nucleus. And close. And then if you go to File, Print Export Worksheet, you could produce your uh, preview. So now instead of AGN, we've got where you might find a black hole. Otherwise, it's just a straightforward list of words that people have to circle in the grid. So that's about it for vocabulary puzzles. There are lots of options if you want to put colored words, square, insert pictures and other things. Those will be covered in some of the more advanced videos. But the basics, you just follow through the new puzzle window, follow the steps, have a puzzle, and then print it out or make an interactive puzzle as you prefer. If you get stuck, you can always press F1 at any time to view the comprehensive help file that's included.